Hey everyone, it's Naturally Ae, and thanks for tuning in for my next video. Uh, today we're gonna do a tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I get my wash and goes. As a disclaimer, um, I just wanna say beforehand, I do have to apologize for <laughs> all the main mugs. Um, I was just very focused on getting the shots right for you guys and I was not thinking about smiling in the video, so I do have to apologize for that but if you want to see how I get my curls hydrated soft all year round then stick around for this video because you're not gonna want to miss it so I'm starting out on a two week old wash and go I've got a decent amount of buildup in the front especially from doing high puffs the last few days for this video I'll be demonstrating a curly girl friendly method to washing my hair meaning all products used have little to no sulfates or silicones, and they encourage the full potential of each curl. Today you'll see products I've been using for years, but as always, what works for me may not work for you, so be open to exploring new products. Step one is to apply my pre-poo or, pre or pre-shampoo. Because I will not actually be using a shampoo today, I def it definitely helps to loosen dirt and product buildup with a pre-poo first. I don't always pre-poo, but I had the time today, so I might as well. I will be using Trader Joe's Tree Tea Tingle with their coconut oil. This combination works nicely for me, so I buy it from time to time as a treat. As you can see, I'm just finger detangling my hair until I can run my fingers through. I primarily use my thumbs to detangle because it minimizes breakage, uh, which is more likely to occur with a comb. If I have any extra product, I'll just massage that into my scalp. Step two is to rinse with warm water. It's important to rinse really, really well, especially if you're like me and you work out and you can go a few days without actually combing your hair. We need to get all the dirt, all the grime out before going any further. Step three is to wash. Today I'm using As I Am Coconut Co-Wash. A co-wash is a conditioning shampoo, so there's a lot more moisturizing ingredients and no stripping effect on the hair. More times than not, a co-wash will not cause the hair to lather, so try not to expect it. Um, as you can see, I'm just working the product through without causing any friction. Working in a downward motion reduces friction, which can cause knots and cause breakage. So be gentle. You will have some shed hairs, but it shouldn't be like a big wad of hair. And then I just move to the other side. This is just my hair uh, soaking wet with no products freshly out of the shower. Step four is to deep condition. I will be using the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Refer Oil Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. I don't wash my hair without deep conditioning it because a good deep conditioner really is that important. Deep conditioners fortify the hair shaft by either providing additional protein or moisture. It can strengthen the hair like with a protein treatment or improve the elasticity like with a moisturizing mask. You don't pay that extra $10 at the salon for nothing. It is intended to make your hair healthier. Just remember that consistency is key. So here I'm just working the product through, ensuring every single strand is coated. Then I'll put my hair up and cover with the plastic cap. For me, I love deep conditioning with my heating cap. The gentle warmth opens up the cuticles along the hair shaft, allowing for better product penetration. After 30 minutes, I will just rinse with cool water. Um, that, will help, that will help to close the cuticles on the hair shaft, keeping all that good moisture in from the deep conditioner. Step six is to just dry the hair a little bit. I don't like working on soaking wet hair. So I actually lightly dry it so that it's not dripping and then add water using a water bottle. Step seven is to style. Today I'm using three products, the Shea Moisture Bamboo Extract and Maca Resilient 
uh, growth root stimulator, the Shea Moisture Bio App, and tea tree oils, low porosity, protein free, leave-in detangler, and the Eco Styler Gel in olive oil. Whew, that was a mouthful. As a disclaimer, I have never used a root stimulator before. I generally do not buy products specifically for my roots, but I wanted to give it a try. But anyway, first I make my part, uh, make my part which outlines where my bangs will fall. Then I just section the rest of my hair into four or five parts. For each section, I apply the root stimulator, stimulator and really rub that in. Then I'll split each part in two smaller sections and apply my detangler. I will definitely add more to the ends if I feel like they're not fully hydrated. Then I'll rake that in and go over that with a wide tooth uh, wide tooth comb. Next, I'll add the gel. This is probably the most important step because the way the gel is applied can make or break the final look. It's important to go light handed because the gel is heavy. I start at the roots, ensuring the roots are actually coated with the gel. Without doing this, by day three, the roots look like an afro and the ends are nicely curled. So I always get the roots first, then smooth the product down the hair shaft and repeat. I, small, I apply a small, product, a small amount of the product a little further down and smooth the product through. When the hair is nicely coated, I'll start twirling. For this video, I use a separate and twirl method to produce my curls, but if I'm short on time, I'll rake it through instead. Separate and twirl uh, method produces a fluffier result, so that's what I went for. 45 minutes later, uh, I am pretty much all done here. I am able to smooth my edges down and I'll actually pin back my bangs. Pinning back of the bangs actually ensures that they dry this way so I won't have to use a bobby pin at any point later in the week. But that's pretty much it as far as applying my stylers. Little shake, a little fluff, but we're not exactly done just yet. Step eight is to dry again. If it were summer, I would just go out just like this. There's enough humidity in New York for my hair to dry in a matter of a few hours. But because it's winter, I have to speed up the process. So I dry my hair using a t-shirt for about an hour. After that, my hair is about 85% dry and it's really just the roots in my crown that are still wet. But it's good enough for me to, to put my hair in a pineapple, take my ass to bed. Step nine is to fluff to perfection. The next day, I just remove my bonnet, give it a good shake, and apply my homemade oil next to my hands. Then I'll separate any curls that may have clumped together overnight while also breaking the gel cast. Using the prayer method, I apply oil to the length of my hair just to get rid of that gel look and feeling. And as always, add a little bit more shine. After that, I'm ready to go. Everybody, thanks for tuning in for my first tutorial on how to achieve my wash and go looks. I hope that through this video you were able to pick up a new technique or a new product that might help you achieve the wash and go look. Um, if anything sticks out and works for you, please let me know. If you have any questions, also please comment below. I will be listing all the products and all the information for you guys in the description box. And be sure to, you know, uh, like, comment, uh, share, and definitely, definitely hit that subscribe button. I don't know where it's going to be, but make sure you hit it so you can keep up with me on my journey to waist length. All right? All right. Until next time, stay blessed and unstressed, my friends.